Well, good morning. I am very thankful you chose to come inside a building when it looks like that outside. But uh, we're very glad you're here today just to, to worship uh, Almighty God, the one who created all of us. Um, is the one we worship. The one who created us is the one we worship. The one who sent Jesus Christ to this world to die for us, it's the one we worship. We are worshiping him because he is good. And so I invite you to stand if you can and would like to. Um, and we're going to be looking at this verse for a few weeks. Today we're just going to read it together. This is, this is a great, encouraging it's a prayer uh, from Paul to Christians, um, and we need encouragement. And so this is one that, that gives us truth, and so as we're learning this, it's just a great thing to have in our, our mindset. So let's read this together. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you believe, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, Romans 15, 13. All right, great. It's a longer verse. Uh, so if you're going to memorize, we'll have some sheets out. So what we've been doing for those that are new, we've been handing out sheets that are trying, you know, if you want to help put that in your mind and your heart to help you memorize those. And so we are glad you're here. And this, uh, this song is such a great song because of what Jesus has done for us.
So, uh, we, we enjoy life, we enjoy God, um, but everything that we do, uh, this is a great song that just says that, is to God be the glory. Because he is the one, as I said, he, he created us. He's the one who loved us even while we were still sinners. He sent Jesus to die for us. And that's why we want to give him the glory for all things. So let's sing this great hymn, To God Be the Glory.
But that's okay. You know, we're we're giving God the glory. That's what we're doing. I want to read a great passage of Scripture. If you have Bible, you can turn there with your, your own Bible. But be reading out of Psalms of just what we've been singing about. Psalm 33, verses 1 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous ones. And that's those who have given their life to Christ. Praise from the upright is beautiful. Praise the Lord with the lyre, which is a musical instrument. Make music to him on a ten-string harp. Sing a new song to him. Play skillfully on the strings with a joyful shout. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his work is trustworthy. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the Lord's unfailing love. The heavens were made by the word of the Lord, and all the stars by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the water of the sea into a heap. He puts the depths into storehouses. Let the whole earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it came into being. He commanded, and it came into existence. He's talking about the creation of God, the power of God, but especially his power to save us. Let's go to him in prayer. Father, we do thank you for this beautiful day you've given to us. God, a day that you said every day, God, is a day to rejoice because of you. Not because of our circumstances or because of our health or anything else, but because of you. But Lord, we thank you that you do help us in all circumstances. We thank you you've given us a creation around us. We thank you that you created us to worship you. And God, we especially thank you for sending your son Jesus so that we can do that. I pray as we continue to sing, as we hear from your word, God, that we would love you more in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So... If you don't have any reasons to praise the Lord, how about 10,000? <laughs> Bless the Lord.
you'd like to come up to the front row, please? Got some sicknesses going on. Kids are gone. I think I'm gonna sit with you guys today. Is that right? Anybody else? Come on down. Let's see here. All right. While they're coming on right here, down. Sit right here. There you go. Have a seat. I have some questions for you. First one. What is prayer? Talking to, God. talking to God. For example, not that John is God, but it's a conversation, right? So if I'm going to have a conversation with God, I'm like, with God. With John, we get that straight right now. With John, with John, be like, hey, John, you just, I just love you. You're so amazing. And I have, you know, I have this stuff I need to do. Like, I need you to help me clean the garage out. Could you please bring in the dog? Yeah, and if you could just also like, I need you to go to church. Well, if I could do that. But if you would, I need this. It's uh, about me. Okay. Would you know. please provide? Okay. Is that a conversation? That's home. It's not. <laughs> But most of the time we go to Bob God and it's like, I have my list of things. Thank you very much. See ya. But it needs to go both ways. We need to be still and know that he is God, the Bible says. And God will answer through his word, through fellow believers. So that's conversation with God. Now, what, what position should we be when we pray? Should we be standing? No. What? <laughs> no? What, what position should we be to pray? Uh, be on our knees. On our knees? That's a good one. Did you know there's no right or wrong way? There's no power position? The Bible talks about, I've got all these, I looked all these up. You can, you can be on your knees. You can be in bed and pray. You can pray out loud. You can pray silently. You can pray with your hands lifted up. You can pray with your eyes open. Did you know that? That kind of feels weird at first, but you can do it. You can just say, God, you're so awesome. You can pray with your head bowed. You can pray flat on the ground. All of these are instances in the Bible where people lay them flat on the ground praying to God. So, pretty cool, right? Power of prayer. When should we pray? Anytime. Okay, you got it. That's a good answer. You nailed it. That's right. Day, night, when you're afraid, when you're sad, when you need help, always. So there's no limit. Isn't that cool? Now, what stops us from praying? You're right. He said, did you hear him? He thinks the devil. Yeah. That's right. You are right, buddy. But you know who's stronger? Our God is stronger than the devil. So we can't we don't have to let the devil stop us. What else stops us? Do you ever feel like you're praying? You're like, hello, are you there? Do you hear me? Like sometimes we our own feelings, we feel like he's not listening. Or sometimes we've been disobedient to God. Does he hear us? Yes. But it's like if um, I get all mad at John and I'm yelling at him and I'm, and I'm like, I think I need some, okay. Don't we do that with God? You're like, I don't need you. I'm not going to follow you. I don't care what you say. But when, when a need comes and you're like, oh, oh God, hello, you know. Yeah. So sometimes we're going to, I do have an illustration here. I was talking about prayer. So this is us up here praying to God. Don't worry about the direction. But these are things that we feel like can stop us sometimes. So you said the devil. Let's put the devil in there. What else? Our, our disobedience. We feel like that's, God's not going to hear me now because I've been disobedient. What else? Busyness. Busy. Yep. Oh. Sometimes we just don't feel like our words are being heard. But let me tell you, don't trust your feelings very much, but trust the fact and God says, I will hear you. I always hear you. Okay? So even though you don't feel like it, even though you feel like your prayer is hitting the ceiling and not going any further, God hears you. I'll show you. Oops. Excuse you. Okay. Those are things we feel like will block our prayers. But you know what? Even when you feel like it's going to block your prayer, I want you to still keep praying. I'm praying I'm going to squirt. All right. Let's see what happens. God promises he's going to hear our prayers. So they're coming. 
Anything stopping our prayer? No. No. Our prayer's getting through, isn't it? Now, from our side, it looks like he's never going to hear me. He's not going to answer. I don't know what's going on. But God's like, I hear you. I got you. I hear what you're saying. Isn't that cool? Our prayers are getting through. And it's pretty. I like that. All right. God is God keeps his promises. Thank you. <laughs> Make a mess. Okay. So I want you to know that you can pray and God will hear you. It doesn't matter what you feel like. If you've been disobedient, the first prayer needs to be, God, I, I'm sorry. I confess my sin. And I want that relationship. I'm still your child, but it's kind of a little awkward. And you want to get that relationship right. So I want to read Psalm 145, 18. The Lord is near all who call out to him. All who call out to him with integrity. And there's so many other verses about God hears. And he knows. And he will answer in his perfect timing. Right? Sometimes I, I ask John, could you do this? And it's like, okay, it comes later. But eventually it comes, right? Should, right? So the point is to pray. And you know what, right now? We're going to pray with our eyes open. And I'm standing. Think that's going to work? It's going to work. Let's do it. God, you're so amazing. And I just want to talk to you and I want to thank you for who you are, for what you've done for us. And that you hear us. And you know everybody here. You know their heart, their mind, their soul, everything. And we can trust you, God. So help us to pray to you all the time, anytime, everywhere, about all things. Amen. We pray. Pretty cool, huh? Okay. I know it feels weird. You feel like you should like this now? No, it's okay. Come on, get your bags here, worship bags. If anybody out there didn't get one, let's see. There you go, buddy. And also, while they're doing that, if you had talked to me about wanting a, one of the scripture notebooks, raise your hand real quick because I've got more. They, they only set half the first time. All right, then I've got some more. So if you'd like one of these, what it is, is just the, the book of Ephesians, and the scripture's on one side, and you can do notes on the other side. So if you want one, just raise your hand right now. All right, a few back there. Edith, can you hand, this for, <laughs> hand these out for me? All right. Raise your hand again, please. So I did. I did tell, tell people they're they're four dollars. If, if you can, if you want to just throw an extra four bucks back there in the box, uh, that'd be great. If not, that's okay too. So don't worry about that. All right, we are starting as as this book says. The book. It's a letter to the Ephesians. These were Christians who were living in a place called Ephesus. Now, Ephesus is way over there, or that way. It depends. You can go all the way around the world, so or that way, either one. But you can do it over there. It's, it's in the, the Middle East part. And Ephesus was a, a, a large city. We'll talk more about this next week about it. But one of the main things that Ephesus was known for was this Temple of Artemis, or sometimes called the Temple of Diana. Uh, they built this. This is a huge thing. It, if you put our church and put three more churches that way, and then three more churches that way, that's the size of this temple. It's a huge temple. And so they had a religion there, but they, they mainly built it out of their pride, out of we are the, the center of commerce, we are the center of wealth. And that's really what they were worshiping, was, was that false god of, of that pride, of that wealth, of this is who we are. And so when Paul was writing to these Christians in that area, he was writing them, with that understanding that this is where they've been, this is their understanding. Because we all have pride in in our place. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm proud, I'm a Hoosier, because I was born in Indianapolis, Indiana. I only lived there three years, but I'm that. Then we moved to the, the great state of Missouri, lived there most of my life, but Illinois is my home. And so I claim all of that, don't claim all of Illinois, but I claim all these places, but it's, it's I'm proud of where I am. And then getting even more down to it, 
I live in Coal Valley, and I love that. And so I have that pride. We have our pride in our, our, our sports and our, our families and all those different places. But this place of Ephesus was especially proud of this. And it, there's still some of the columns that are standing there. In the 4th century, a fire came through and, and burnt that. And I'm like, it's stone. How'd that happen? But I guess there was stuff inside the burn. And so we're, this is the place. Again, we hear a little bit more about that, about the people now, next week. Um, but this is that letter that Paul is writing to these Christians. And the question for today uh, is, what should we pray for? And that's, that's a big question. We're going to kind of hit on that a little bit. Because we pray for sick people. And that's good. We pray for people who are hurting in different ways. We pray for people who are in need. We pray for our children. We pray for parents. We pray for our neighbors. We pray for our leaders. Uh, we're to pray for so many people. But, you know, at one point the disciples who were hanging out with Jesus said, Jesus, why don't you teach us how to pray? And so he, he gave them that model prayer. And that is, is a great format of praying. But we still need other teachings about expanding our prayers, deepening our prayers. And this is where Paul is going with, with this right now. Uh, a letter to Christians in a place that is kind of messed up, and that's everywhere we live, uh, teaching them of what we should pray for. And so two areas this morning that I'm going to be hitting on, that Paul hits on, is, is well, praising God and, and praying to God for what he's doing and what he's done in Christians. And the second one is praising God for why they're Christians, and that's for Jesus. So, first one, praying about believers. These are followers of Jesus, those who've given their life, committed their life to Christ. It says The Bible says if you repent, you believe, you confess that Jesus did all the work. It's not by our works, but we believe in him, and so we want to follow him. The Bible says you become saved. It's a true transformation. And so praying for those type of people. It doesn't mean we're not to pray for people who don't know Jesus. We're supposed to do that too. They've come to know Jesus. They can see his goodness. Um, but in this letter, Paul is saying, I, I want to thank God for what he has done in these people, these Christians, in, in this place of Ephesus. This to me is, I need this teaching. I think we all need this teaching. Because we're so often praying for people for their sick, that are hurting. But this is, this is great teaching from God for us to encourage us, again, to expand our prayer life, to pray, <coughs> excuse me, deeper. <coughs> clear my throat. I have a clean water here. And so this is what he, he begins. He says, in Ephesians 1, 15 and 16, this is why, since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, again, saints are those who are Christians, I never stop giving thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. So he's taking this thanksgiving again to God for Christians and what he's heard about. Them. Remember last week we looked at the earlier passage of, of how this we are saved in this whole dynamic of this, that the, the Father chosen adopted us, that the Son, Jesus, He redeemed us, He bought us back, and the Holy Spirit has sealed us forever. And so because of all that, Paul is saying, I just thank God for what He's done in you. I'm just so thankful that, that He, because of what He has done, sent in Jesus, and that you have given your life to Him, putting faith and so during this, we're going to be asking just some questions, not to ask, uh, answer out loud, but to think about. And so when you pray, do you thank God that he has saved others, that he has changed people's lives? Because it's, it's a wonderful thing to pray for that I know I don't pray as often as I should, and I know we don't pray as often as we should, but this is why Paul is, is saying this. It's, it's written for, again, for our education. He's writing a letter to them, but this is for us too. Thanking God for others that they've given their life to Christ, that God has transformed them. 
I mean, we are thankful when, when God answers our prayers and, and people get out of the hospital, people get better, or people recover from different things. We're thankful to God for that, but do we really thank God for other people that we know or may not know, but we know they're Christians, and God, thank you that, that you saved them. Because that is a great prayer. But he goes on from that. It's not just praying about for what God has done, but also thanking God and praying for what he is doing and going to do. And this is what you're praying for here in this. Great, amazing, wonderful areas to pray for Christians as they continue on in life. I need these prayers. You need these prayers. And so Paul continues on. In verse 17, he says, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father. By the way, I just got to pause for a minute. I, you know, Paul's writing this letter, or he's dictating the letter, one of the two. Um, but he's saying, I just pray that God does. And then he's, he's just thinking about God. Man, he's a glorious Father. You know, because none of us have had perfect fathers. Not even close. None of us have had glorious fathers. And they may be really men, but great men, but, but sometimes men really stink. Fathers are terrible at times. But that's why God the Father is a perfect Father. And when Paul is writing, I think, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, he's just so thankful to God of who he is. But this is what he says. He said, would give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Praying to God that he give you Christians this spirit of wisdom. What is the spirit of wisdom? Is it some like spirit? No, he's saying that the Holy Spirit, who we receive, again, as we come to Christ, that he'd give you wisdom. When Paul is writing this, all the scripture that is there is just the Old Testament, the Old Covenant. The letters that Paul is writing, some other letters are starting to, to get together, but, but we have the complete Bible here. And so when Paul is writing, he's saying, I pray that the Holy Spirit gives you wisdom from God's word, that, that he gives you this the revelation of, about who he is and more of that knowledge of him from the scriptures. Because we can read this and it may not really be part of us, it may not internalize, it may not change us, but Paul is saying, you know, I'm so thankful you're saved, but I pray that you're growing in him, that you're starting to understand him more. Understanding who this glorious Father is, understanding more who Jesus is. Then he continues on to, and as I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, so you may know what is the hope of His calling, what is the wealth of His glorious inheritance in the saints. All right, eyes of your heart. That's kind of weird, you know. It's like I've got some eyes down there. So, all right, we have eyes up here that we see, right? We have a heart that beats. When the Bible's talking about hearts, he's talking about just our inner being. When he's saying eyes of the heart, it's that, it's that opening of our mind. The Bible a couple times talks about that God opens up the hearts for understanding. There's a lady called Lydia that said God, God opened her eyes to see the truth of the scriptures. And this is what he's praying. He said, I pray that you're, you just be enlightened, that you're starting to understand this. That, and the reason why, so you may know what is the hope of his calling the hope of his calling. Now, this hope is different than sometimes what we say. You know, I hope I get a new car tomorrow. That's not happening. It's a wish. This hope is a sure, solid <laughs> hope. We say this is true because God is true. This is what he said. And because what he said, I have this now hope. And he's saying, I hope you, I hope, I want you to understand more and more the hope of his calling, the the fullness of his calling of his saving us. And what, of, what is the wealth of his glorious inheritance in the saints? A prayer for believers to understand more and more what we've been doing. We have an inheritance waiting for us. And that's heaven. What a great thing. No more pain, no more sorrow. We are reconciled to God already because of faith in Jesus when we see him, we stand in fullness of joy. We get to worship him forever and ever and ever. It's a perfect worship, not like what we do here. It's imperfect. We're still to worship him, but it's going to be an amazing place. But the inheritance, we also have been given every spiritual blessing here. We've been given blessings. 
Today is a blessing. I sent out our text and I said, great news, or good news, I said. We get to come together today. Because I think that's great news. I mean, what a gift that God has given us family, this family in Christ. We have inheritance in the saints, with the saints. We have this together. Yes, we're, we have sicknesses. Yes, we have troubles. We have trials. We have all these things going on. And they're different. But this we have together. And, he, and Paul is saying, I want you to understand this more and more. What we have in Jesus Christ, the greatness of the wealth of our salvation is so amazing. And, and he's praying that for them to understand. And sometimes, yeah, I've got, I want to know that more. I want to know that more. But am I, am I praying it for other believers to know more? Because that pierces me at times. And because, yes, I'll pray for people who are sick and hurting and all that. But am I praying, are you praying, for other Christians that, that these things, this, this wonderful faith in Christ, <laughs> grow more? And then he continues on in the next verse, verse 19. And, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the mighty, mighty working of his strength? Immeasurable greatness, big words, of his power, big word, toward us who believe. We, who are the creation, we who think we're so big at times. You now, Rich was talking about at Iron Sharpens and Iron, there was a former NFL guy there um, that spoke, and he went up next to him. He said, wasn't that big, but he shook his hand and about crushed him. And so you, you think about people all around here um, that are so strong and so mighty, but we sing, my God is so big. He's so strong and so mighty. And there's nothing my God cannot do because he is the one, again, who spoke all of this into existence. He is the one who has all of this in his hands. Sometimes we go, man, it's chaos. God, where are you? But he has it all in his hands. He knows what he's doing. And so all of him has been, he has, he's given us his power to save us, to take us from an eternity in hell to an eternity in, in paradise in heaven with him. To take every sin we've ever thought, said, and done and erase it so he doesn't remember it anymore because he placed it upon Jesus, his son, at the cross. That's power. And it's a mighty working power that continues to work in my life. But sometimes I look at John Sedgwick and go, oh, I'm a wreck. I'm a wreck. And sometimes I am. And sometimes I think, God... I don't think he can do anything, but he can do everything. And that's why I'm always telling people, I even said this yesterday to someone, I said, when you look back, sometimes you look back and say, man, I'm just a scumbag. Even you're looking back an hour, but, but look back and see what God has done in your life. I mean, you say God hasn't done much. He has brought you here today. I mean, what a gift that is. And so God is still working in your life to give you the ability to be here, to give you transportation or a friend or somebody to get you to here so you can have fellowship with other people. But beyond that, he's given us every spiritual blessing. He continues to work in our life. And that's the amazing God that he is. And yes, we should be praying for the sick and the hurting, praying for their strength, praying for wisdom and power. And so when you pray, do you thank God that he saved others? And are you praying for their continued life in Christ? Because I need you to be strong and to grow so that when I am weak, you can help. And when you are weak, I can help. That's why we're praying for one another. That's why if you say, I just don't know what to pray, right here, you can just take this passage and start praying specifically for people. Paul, Paul is praying for Christians, a bunch of them. But start off with just one, praying, God, I, I pray for this person because I know they know you. And then start praying these things. Because those are good prayers. Again, don't stop praying for those other things, for people. But expand, deepen your prayer for others. So we're praising God and thanking God for what he's done and praying for what he's doing and going to do in others following Jesus. 
But then we go also, so we're praying for believers, we're also praising God for the greatness of Jesus. He, he's already been saying this. But Paul understands this. Remember, Paul was a leader in the Jewish faith that was a lot of do this, do this, don't do this, do this, do this, and you'll be good. God will love you. God will bless you. And Paul finally understood it's not by the works that we do, but it's by his grace. It's about what Jesus did on the cross. And that's why he is so excited about Jesus, because of what Jesus did. And so after he's prayed this, he goes on by saying this. He says, Ephesians 1.20, after he talked about the power, it says, He exercised this power in Christ by raising him from the dead, seating him at the right hand in heavens, far above every ruler and authority, power and dominion, and every title given, not only in this age, but also in the, in the one to come, meaning there's a new life after this world. There's a new age after this world. It's a, it's a forever age. And so he's, he's like, Jesus is amazing. God is amazing because he did this through Christ. And now Christ is above all. That's what that word is, an amazing word, Christ. It, it, is, it has a king connotation. It has an uh, anointed one, uh, the Messiah. This is who he is. He has a name, and he has been seated above all other authorities in the world. Now, we are to honor and follow authorities. God says we're to honor the government. We're to follow them. As long as it's not going against God's word. We are to, to pray for them. We're to follow our, the authority, children are to follow authority in parents at home. Husbands are to follow the authority of their wives. Wait, wait a minute. No. No, we, we share authority. But, but we, we submit ourselves to authority, but every authority that we think is so strong and so mighty, even in the past history, even at Ephesus, so when he's talking about this, he's understanding the authority there at Ephesus, especially around the Artemis temple, it is a strong authority. And so he's teaching them. And Jesus has more authority. Every power you think of in the Roman government and beyond, that's nothing compared to what Jesus has. And so, again, Paul is so excited about this, this title of Christ. Who's been, and that title has been given to Jesus because he was, again, Jesus has always been, but he was born here of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. He, he left the glories of heaven and became human. And he died for us and all of that. And then it says he subjected everything under his feet, Jesus' feet, and appointed him as head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. He, Jesus, is the head of the church. People get confused with this because uh, I, I know people say, yeah, I go to John's church, not my church. Okay, uh, the church is not about a man. Although Jesus humbled himself and became a man, he is not a man. He is Almighty God. He is the Son of God. The church is not about a man. It's about Christ. He is the head of the church, and that's that is the focus. Yes, I I, I am a leader here. I am the, the the bishop, the pastor, the elder. Different words that the Scripture says. But my authority is nothing. Jesus has all authority. The Word has all authority. And that's why we worship Him. You know, time and time again with the disciples, when, when God worked through them, people would fall down sometimes at their feet and worship Him. They're like, no, I'm a man just like you. I'm human just like you. Faults and failures. But Jesus never had that. Paul writes about this in Philippians. He says, Talking about Jesus who, existing in the form of God, did not consider equality with God as something to be exploited. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a servant, taking on the likeness of humanity. And when he had come as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to the death on a cross. Right there is an amazing statement, by the way. He didn't just come and die. He went 
and the Roman government had, had come up with this most excruciating way to die by putting them on a cross. It was so painful, so long and drawn out, that while you're hanging there on the cross, you eventually, through all the pain and sorrow and, and everything that's going on, you eventually drown in your own body fluids because you cannot stand up to get a breath. And that was a terrible punishment. You're out there on a cross. People are hurling insults, throwing things at you on the cross because you're a criminal. And so the, the physical pain, and he just died, but he came and ex experienced this physical pain. But more than that, while on the cross, the three hours of darkness, the full wrath of God for our sins was, was thrown, put upon Jesus. And he took that penalty for us. So, for this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that <coughs> at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and earth and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's who we worship. That's why we're here. That's why Paul is so excited. That's why he's thanking God for what he has done in us, what he's doing in us, and it's all because of Jesus Christ. What an amazing, amazing thing God the Father has done in us. Us who at times are really, really, really bad in our minds, in our words, in our actions. And that is sin. That's, that's why the punishment of, of hell, the wrath of God, is placed upon us. Because it's wrong and it's against God. But that's why Jesus came. So every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. The only way for salvation is to do that here on earth. Because once you die, there's not a chance to do so. That's why God calls us to come to him. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says you will be saved. Saved from that eternal punishment, not because of your works, but because of Jesus. And again, Paul is just praying this. He's so excited about this as he's thanking God. Where Paul is in prison, he's writing this, and he's like, thanking God for these people. They're not perfect people. But God doesn't save perfect people, because there are no people, perfect people. But he saved them, transformed them, made them clean because of Jesus. Now he's praying that they start understanding this more and more. But the more you understand this, the more you go, wow, God is so good. The more you understand this, the more I want to live for him because of what Jesus has done for me. That's the great God we have. So putting all this simply, pray. Edith, what is pray? What is that? Pray is talking to God. Talking to God, right? And that's the, that's the greatness of prayer. Yeah, so I've, I've been around, I mean, growing up and, and, and people pray. It's like, oh man, I can't pray. Listen to them, they're great. One time I was at a conference, and, and some of you may know who Henry Blackaby was. He was a great leader that died just a month ago. And I didn't know him, and I was standing next to him, and they said, just huddle up with three people and pray. It was him and this other guy. And introduce yourself, and he goes, I'm Henry Blackaby. And I was like, oh, I'm going to pray in front of this guy. <laughs> but, you know, but that was just that was just John. Because I'm not praying to Henry Blackaby. I'm, I'm praying to God. And God wants to hear us. Not the eloquence of our words. Because when we are talking, I'm not an eloquent. When I'm up here, I'm not an eloquent guy either. But we, we just talk to him as, as who he is. We're acknowledging he's God, praising him for him. But he just wants to hear from us. He wants to hear from us. And he does hear from us. As the illustration said. So, I encourage you to expand your prayers. Beyond where they are right now. Even if you're praying this, expand them, deepen them more. But move beyond the sickness and the hurts and pray for other believers. Because, you know, we all need prayer. And the biggest prayers are here. And we understand God more and more. understand the greatness of our salvation because of the greatness of Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, that's what it is. It's, it's the coming to him in faith. It's not by our works that we've done. It's just coming to him by faith. But it's acknowledge him publicly. You can't be a secret Christian. It is a public confession. 
And Paul gets into more of that as we go in this letter. But if, if, if it's a secret Christian, then are you ashamed of them? No. And so you let somebody know. The girl is a great place to let people know. So if you've come to Christ today, I just I encourage you. Do you do it while we're singing this next song, or do you just tell me? But tell someone that you just gave your life to Christ. But for most of us here, we we have done that, and we want people pray. I want people praying this for me, and so we need to be praying this for others. And so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for who you are. And God, I do pray that we would understand you more and more. God, we will never fully understand you because you're God. You're not like us. Your ways are not like our ways, but your ways are perfect. Your thoughts are right. Everything you do is holy. And we thank you for that. And God, I thank you that you love us even though we are not, even though we were the rebels. We were the prideful. We are the ones who have thought and said and done horrible things against you, against others. But Lord, thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for sending Jesus so that by faith in him, we can know you, we can be reconciled to you. God, I pray that we would grow closer and closer to you and that we would pray for others to do the same. For your glory and your glory alone. Amen. Let's dance. we sing this hymn. Uh, there is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. <laughs> Excited me. There's so much in that, it's hard for me to break it down like that, but I did. And I'm done. I'll sit down. <laughs> Hello. If you'd like to visit our website at newhopecv.com, uh, we have everything that's on there from the bulletin to worship service, uh, announcements are also on there. There's also a spot where if you need prayer or if you need or if you know of anybody else who needs prayer, you can uh, click on that, put in whatever type of prayer request. 
Uh, or there's also a slip on the back table back there. You can fill that out and just put it in the box next to pastor's office. Upcoming birthdays, March 5th, Emily Nelson. Yeah. March 9th, Larry Swimline. Yeah. And then uh, we have women's ministry. Right? Yes, that's today, this afternoon, at 3 o'clock, downstairs. All the ladies are invited. Uh, the young ladies come too. So if you're visiting from out of town or this is your first time here, if you've got time at 3 o'clock, come join us downstairs. Uh, we have a big time. We study um, God's Word and try to pick like, relevant topics like schedules. Um, Chris and I are working on this topic on schedules together. We can find time in our schedule to meet, so that's not good. So usually God is teaching something about whatever the topic is. Yes. So please come, please join us at 3 o'clock today. I'm going to stand up because last time there's another. No, you sit down. Not yet. You sit down as well. Oh, you're, 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 a little, you're a little, you're a little ways down yet. Okay. <laughs> All right. And on Mondays, if you like to go down to Sunny's Cap, uh, Cafe, or I'm sorry, Sunny's Coffee, it's the new one down here. Uh, took over. I forget what the old oh, one was there. Yeah. It's in uh, the Roth Plaza. It was Jake yeah. Beauty Supply. Okay. Well, it's just down here, right down at the bottom of the hill. Uh, meet at 8:30 and just. Uh, have fellowship and coffee. Uh, young adults, uh, they get together on Tuesdays at Viper Coffee House at That's 646. Right. 646. <laughs> is, is that, does, somebody, does somebody show up a minute late all the time? <laughs> we said that one minute was for Emily. <laughs> yes, that we, we changed the time to, to accommodate more people who are working, and so we'll be there. We're going to start around 7. But, you know. <laughs> I didn't notice that. That's for anybody out of high school who's 30 years old. If we have a good study, then we get it. Okay. Uh, men's prayer. They meet here at 8 a.m. on Wednesdays. And then after their prayer, they'll go to Flip's Pancakes House. Before <coughs> yeah. Wednesday night Bibles. Uh, Wednesday night study will be from 6.30 to 7.15 on spiritual health. And if you, oh, all right, game's not on here. So uh, game night Friday, uh, Friday at six thirty. Uh, just come here to bring a snack and and have fun and play different games. One more. There's another one. Yeah. Men's breakfast will be uh, this Saturday, eight a.m. Right here, down downstairs. Now we on offering. Offering, if you feel to give, you can give online or you get the offering box in the back. And also, if you're a first time visitor and you filled out one of those connect slips, you can just put that back in the offering box also. And now, John, we have something on voting? Yeah, so uh, a week from. Is it a week from Tuesday? Two weeks from Tuesday? Two weeks from Tuesday, yeah. I don't know, March 19th. Uh, all, again, all of Coal Valley comes here to vote. Uh, I talked to the, the voting people. And they, they're not really expecting a big crowd this time, but we want to have cookies and cakes and stuff. We want to minister to them. So I'm not doing a sign-up list, uh, but come on that day or that Saturday, that Saturday, that Sunday, if you want to bring your cookies or whatever, and then just come and hang out. We are here from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, it's a long day, but it's just great to meet people. I love I love doing that. So you can do that if you can help. And not dying. Not dying. Okay. okay. Your, your Young ladies meet will be the third Thursday as usual, and be at six thirty downstairs. So, ladies, make sure that you're working on your heart <coughs> All right, Ben. Easter. Is, oh, sorry. Okay. Our own story. <laughs> <laughs> I think the men had their turn yesterday. Um, how was the conference, men, yesterday? Good. 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 All right. I'm hoping we hear something about that before the service is over, but the ladies are going to go to Iron Sharpens Iron on uh, Saturday, April 13th. And I'm going to start the registration today, so in a few minutes I'm going to slip in the back. So if you're planning to join us on April 13th, I'll be in the back so you can put your name on the dotted line. <laughs> yes, and so you'll, if you're writing a check, write to the church, but put uh, ISI on there uh, so we know. So again, $50, it costs more than that, the church supplements that. By the way, if you, if you went to the Iron Sharpens Iron yesterday, please stand up just so uh, these are the men that went. 
And there were four others that went that are up here. They're sick. So you guys will probably get sick later on. No, no I hope not. I hope not. But God, God's been just, he continues to work and uh, just praise God for that. Then, the end of this month, the last Sunday of this month is Easter. Kind of an earlier Easter. And we need Easter eggs. So we have our Easter eggs up here. Uh, next week I'll have some empty eggs if you want to grab them, fill them with candy. Remember, good candy. Not candy that you used to like a long time ago, but good candy you think kids would like today or buy the already filled eggs. Uh, we, we've already bought some, some eggs with some spiritual uh, encouragements in them. And, but that's Easter is coming up. So also start inviting people uh, on that Sunday. Next slide is... All right, this is the last day to turn in your, your bottles for the uh, pregnancy resources. You can always turn them in if you forgot to do it next week. We're going to count it up and send it to that. So, but this is another one to add to your prayer list. This is a great ministry. We also support the Baptist Children's Home down south in Carmine that kind of does the same thing. But this is a local place that we support that is, is helping people understand that a baby is life that's inside them. Uh, and so, thank you for those. Thank you for praying for them and those who've given. Uh, but continue to pray for them as we go on. All right, I think that's it. Any other announcements? All right, let's stand and close by singing this verse. This is what our life should be. But we especially thank God for Jesus and to Him be the glory.